Hi, welcome to Quirky Queen's Journals. My name's Kirsten. So today I have been doing an abstract floral acrylic painting and this is just more abstraction from the still life that I did a couple of videos ago. So this is a canvas that I had bought from the range. It is it's more of it's not like a proper canvas material, it's quite plasticky. Um, it's one of their, you know, there's a picture already on it. So I have put a layer of Mod Podge and Gesso down, quite roughly. So you can see some of the colour, the pinky colour still shining through. Um, and also the Mod Podge and the Gesso, I put it on quite thickly so that I can scratch into it, so it gives some texture. Also, the background, I've done more vertical lines on in the kind of table area. I have put some horizontal lines just to give subtle definition. So anyway, I'm doing this vase of flowers. And so I've put up little, um, little headers just to say this is what's coming next. So... I am using Arteza Neon Blue Pouring Paint with silver on this background. Now, I only used these paints on the kind of first layer. When it came to the actual, once I get further into the painting, I used Dela Rowney Cadmium Red, Dela Rowney Cadmium Yellow Deep Hue, Snellier Indigo Blue, and then Snellier silver and sennelier bronze and I used gesso as my white so really just now I'm, I'm just trying to sort of add definition to the background I kind of have an idea of where I'm wanting to go with it which is quite unusual for me and I think it's because I have done quite a lot of pictures of this um, vase of flowers so I want it to be loose and I want it to be more a suggestion of what's going on and I want the leaves themselves to actually be the feature of the painting and that's because the leaves are actually the most interesting part because of the way they move the way they curl the length of them, to me, they're just more interesting than the flower heads. So I'm using a china pencil just to, uh, you know, to define the vase a bit more. I use different mediums and what happens is, although it's more than likely 99% of that china pencil will be covered up, it may still show through in parts. And so all these layers, you know, it, it adds depth to the painting. And that's um, kind of what I'm interested in creating here. And even though I do end up having very simple flat areas, like large simple flat areas, there's still tones and shapes and lines that show through that just add to it. So I used the silver and the blue and the kind of background in the table and I thought, right, the vase, we need to define that. So I'm using the bronze and then I'm using yellow ochre with it. Um, it's the only time I use the yellow ochre. I just, I don't know why I brought out those colours to begin with and I didn't just stick with my, my initial plan of the indigo and the cadmium red and yellow. I'm trying to keep my my shapes um like I like the fact the vase looks quite off balance um and it's not it looks like somebody made it in pottery class beginner pottery class so this is the head of the vase the inner of the vase and I want that to look flat as if it's the circle on top, but at the same time, you still know it is the, the, you know, the inside of the vase. And I'm hoping that the way that I do the draw the stalks and the leaves on and the flower heads, 
helps to achieve that. Another reason for having lots of layers as well, it's not just about making the top layer look good. It really does kind of guide the way of where your painting ends up. It helps you decide, you know, on on the structure of it, on like here, I've done that leaf and I know that leaf's there and I know it's like a real focal point, but I didn't do it very well. So, you know, the marks of it are still there, but I've drawn it in in a better way. But the fact that those marks are still there adds depth to the picture. Does that make sense? <laughs> So these are chalk pastels, soft pastels. Now these are just cheap, off brand. And they worked amazing on top of that acrylic paint. I've never had them work so well. So this was this was a good find. Acrylic paint with chalk pastels on top helps them work a lot better. I mean, look at the coverage I'm getting. I would struggle with that on raw paper. So very pleased. So I'm just doing big giant flower heads. The one on the left and the one on the right are the two that end up being kept and the rest of them do end up blocking them out entirely. However, it still helped shape the composition because at the time I didn't fully know that's where it was going to end up. And also the chalk pastels as well. I, don't, I, I like the way they handled, I like the looseness of it, I like the way that it helped do the line work and also because the plants themselves are living things but the vase and the wall and the table are not, it almost, in, it, the chop pastels helped enhance that by the type of line work that they give you that you can't really achieve the same with the acrylic paint. And I think is when I put the acrylic paint on top of these as well, it does mix in with them a bit. So I'm just putting a sort of shadow around the vase. Um, now, this is 80 centimetres tall, 60 centimetres wide canvas. It's actually quite hard to photograph, like to video. So the bottom of it does tend to be cut off quite a lot. And I apologise for that. But... Not n all the interest is at the top, let's be honest. <laughs> I don't know whether it's see, I blended that there, and I thought, oh, do I really prefer it blended or not? And then, because the most interesting part of those flowers for me actually is the way the petals it's the edges of the petals. So I'm glad I drew that in there. So when I was doing the chalk pastels, it made me think of um, Sandy Hester. I watch a lot of her videos. I think she's wonderful. She just says it like it is. Her poor husband, she gives him a terrible time. <laughs> um, but she paints very loosely and she also uses a lot of media. So the way that I kind of approached those flowers, I don't know whether I was subconsciously influenced by her, but I certainly realised when I was, you know, kind of halfway through doing them that it was very much her style. Maybe a poorer version of it, but still her style. She does a lot of landscapes and a lot of, um, you know, figures. Figures and situations. She doesn't really do solitary figures. Anyway, she's wonderful and, you you know, if you've not watched her videos, they're definitely worth a watch. So at this stage, I'm not sure about... I keep putting this shadow around the vase and I'm not actually sure whether this is going to stay or not at this stage. So for me, this is the moment that the painting started to sort of become alive I started to realize keep going this is going to be good 
is when I put that Hooker's Green acrylic paint on the leaves. Because I don't know what it was. I don't know if it's the fact that there was a few layers already. There's already textures down from the gesso, the Mod Podge, the chalk pastels, the china bit marker, whatever. But I just feel like there's so much movement in these leaves. Whereas if I'd just painted them down straight, they would not have looked like this. I, I can guarantee it. They would not have had... These look alive. And I love that. And Hooker's Green is, you know, it's a great green for nature. It's quite a yellowy green. I do go over this with the indigo and the cadmium yellow though. Um, because that is, I do want the painting to be, you know, based on those colours. Just for harmony. So if I've used indigo blue on the plants and in the background in the table, it just brings it together. Even though none of the colours are actually indigo blue. And I'm just scraping some texture in here with a skewer as well. Another reason why I feel like the movement and just how happy I was with the leaves. Another reason for it could be the fact that I have drew this, tried to draw this plant realistically. And then I've tried to draw it, draw it abstractly. And now I'm doing it as a painting. Um... It could be just that I actually know the subject as well. I think that does make a difference. So this is this this stage is very fiery, <laughs> but I really just want it to be. I want really strong colours in the flowers and the leaves and quite muted colours, in the inanimate objects. So although they share a colour palette, I do use them in different ways and so it gives a different feeling to them. Like the vase is going to be made up of cadmium yellow, cadmium red and some bronze and silver with white, um, which is pretty much, the plants are the red and yellow. So for all they're very, very different looking and they give off a different feeling, you know, they actually do have the same basis. So it just shows you it's more of, it's not just colour that matters when you're doing paintings. And I like the way that see the line work that I'd already done with the chalk pastels. You can see that coming through in the flower heads. It's still there. It's subtle, but it's there. I think this looks like a, a massive patch of weeds or something in the garden. It just looks kind of um, aggressive is a bit of a strong word. It looks unruly. So I'm using the Posca pen here and again it's about just adding in some depth just something extra to add to the flower heads when you're looking at them. Um, and it's also, right now, the leaves and the flowers, for all there's definition in them and the, there's, the placement has been sort of sorted, there's still going to be more, um, more composition work done because I'll put a... I need to add in some of the background back into there. I did do, I ended up going round the vase with the black Posca pen as well and I did regret that because that actually, it was hard to cover up. And also it, it is more the plants that I really wanted to have all the depth in. That's what's alive. So what I did was I ended up going back over the black pen that I put round the vase with a white Posca pen and that that solved the issue. 
And I think this looks great like this. You know, that's interesting in itself that you've just got the colours and the line work separate from each other. But you still know it's a vase of flowers. And also thinking of the composition as well. It's very top heavy. And what I've done is the... So it's almost like that sort of top third has all the everything that's going on. But then because the vase, the wall and the table are such large expanses of colour, I do feel it balances out. Um, and also the values as well. The values in this are very simple. The, the leaves are the dark value. The flower heads end up being the mid values. And the table, the vase in the background end up being the light values. So that probably helps add to the balance as well, actually. The, the, the mid values and the dark values together in a smaller area help balance out the large expanse of light value. Now, I'm, I'm just surmising about that. So if anybody actually knows that for a fact, please let me know. So here, I'm just going over the flowers again. And this is, um, I have added in the silver, the bronze and some white gesso as well. So it's not as pale as what I used on the vase, but... They're still going to be, it's not all going to be fiery reds and yellows. There's going to be a mixture. And I end up doing a negative painting on here as well. When I'd went to the portrait class during the week, they were talking about, you know, you paint what's around the object rather than the object itself. So right now we're painting the objects. But when I go to do the final sort of structure of the painting, that's the approach I take. Probably a very simplified version of it, but it is the approach I take. So I like this as well because I'm painting over leaves just now and flashes of that green will still show through, which will give the illusion of leaves and stalks sort of behind the flowers because at the end of the day it is a bunch of flowers. So we're getting to the stage of the painting where it can get fiddly and you've, you're going back and forth in a dance. Um, to me that's always a sign when you reach that stage to keep going because there is interest and there is complexity and you're just trying to balance that out. So um, that is the stage we're reaching. Decision making stages. I didn't get this bit photographed. Basically, um, there's just less white here. And what I'm doing as well is it's smaller brush strokes. There's dabs. There's kind of fast strokes um, instead of just being blocks of colour. It's a big mix. So we've got some, we've got quite a large range of red, yellow and oranges, peaches, pinks and those flowers now. So we are... Oh, I'm going to do the leaves again with the cadmium yellow and the indigo blue. Again, I talked about this earlier. It's just about having having a limited palette and using it throughout the painting. I think that's my favourite part of the whole painting, that leaf. I feel quite precious about that. I don't know why. 
I like the way it moves, the angle it sits at. I love that yellow green shade. It's so fresh looking. Like young plants have that quite yellow hue to them. So again, there's still flowers, parts of the flowers getting covered up by the green. Which again gives that illusion of depth, kind of hints of flowers behind the leaves. I actually have some silver mixed in with this as well. So that ties it in with the background in the table. I don't put a lot of them in and they don't they certainly don't look metallic or shiny. They just I don't know, I feel like they add a maybe like a greyness to it. A maturity to the colour, the metallic paints. I mean, that silver doesn't look silver. It's it's almost like a hint. So I'm just adding in more leaves here. I'm just sort of defining the structure more. Do you know, I'm looking at those plants and they look like sort of fiery heads trying to climb out the pot. Maybe I should have left it at this stage and called it a supernatural painting. Oh, this bit here ends up a bit wonky. This all gets fixed, but I ended up sort of making this sort of triangle in the middle that just looked a bit daft and unnatural. Although I suppose making the abstract painting at the end it doesn't look overly natural. I was happy with it though. So we're at, still in that fiddly stage, that, that, that stage where we're going back and forth between the flower heads and the leaves. You know, trying to get them balanced, trying to get the composition right, trying to get them to work together. And it can feel like, it can almost feel like you're lost in this stage, but all you're doing is you're just taking turns and just thinking, what can I do? What can I do? You can't make a mistake because you can just cover it up. And also... I'm not actually, the proper shaping is still to come. That comes when I add in the background around the flowers and the leaves. I'm just trying to repair this bit where I went wonky by um, using tissue paper to rub the wet paint off. So again, there's the skewer back. It just always helps, I think, adding, it's almost like the direction that I that these are going in, the leaves are going in, that I'm using the skewer to define. Yeah, I'd put some green round there at the end and I didn't want that. I wanted that background to go right up to the top. So this is a cadmium yellow glaze. It's basically water with a little bit of cadmium yellow. And there's lots and lots of different colours in the flower heads. So this is almost just like... Basically this is a block colour over the top, but it's extremely thin. And it doesn't hide any of the colours. It just brings them together more. I suppose it also helps change some of the colours as well. For all you're putting one colour over, it just, it does help. Um, it's like they're, ye they're yellow flowers, but they've got lots and lots of different tones in them. 
just using the china mark around the leaves again. This is really trying to define what's going to be happening. So that dance we've just done between the flower heads and the leaves, we're going to be doing something similar with the background, the vase and the table. Um, that's me just going over that black line with the white Posca pen. When I started this, I thought I would like a shadow, you know, defined around the vase. But um, I then decided that I'd prefer a flat composition. So I think I'm going to do... What am I doing? Oh, going over the stalks again. I've cut a lot of that out. I basically did the same as I did before. <laughs> And now you can see here, this is the vase. And I'm going to use the white gesso. So that was actually the red and the yellow mixture that I'd used on the flower heads. And I just added it into the green. And now I'm going to paint the vase with it. And again, this is just a block of colour, so I've cut this down as well. You can see it there. Now, I've propped the paint, painting up. I did think I'd positioned the camera where you could see it more, but unfortunately, you couldn't. Um, but all I am doing is the blocks of colour, but also I am defining... I'm cutting into the flowers and the leaves... I've got black paint on my face. <laughs> or green. It must be green. So it's actually quite hard cutting in around the leaves. And I find that they just got narrower and narrower every time I did it. I do think it looks more professional. It looks more finished though. Once you have actually added in, when you, instead of painting the, the object on to the background, you then paint the background onto the object. It actually does, I think it gave it a much nicer, stronger finish. So this is me cutting in the inside of the vase now. It's quite funny to think all that work and it's actually here where it really, um, it's near the finishing but it actually takes on its shape. But because of everything we've done, you already know where all the shapes are going to be and you know exactly how you want it to look. And you can actually concentrate on the kind of trying to be, um, <laughs> trying to stay within the lines. And as well, the colours here, like this is just one layer so it's not it doesn't look flat it's obviously some area, some parts of it are transparent some are opaque and i wanted it to be more of an opaque look overall so i think they ended up with three layers on the vase inner the vase the background and the table just to give the the overall look and I suppose that's what makes it look inanimate and what makes the flower look alive is the fact that the flower has lots of texture and tones, etc. And inanimate objects are just flat. For me, anyway, that's how it worked in my mind. I really enjoyed doing this. And I'm actually, when I did the still life, there was a plant a cheese plant maybe a monster act plant it's a plant with big leaves and i'm going to do that as well but i'm thinking i'm going to do it on a smaller scale because um it'll be easier to video so 
so this is just the final layers going on you can see that i have removed quite a lot of the leaves and flowers and i've actually kept the flower on the top right hand corner is very abstract because what i've done is i've actually just left the suggestion of it um i've not given it a stock and i just think that's for me that made it more interesting to look at so that's us just about finished i'm just showing you little bits of putting on this final layer you don't want to watch the whole thing happening so this is it and i'm very pleased with it and i hope you enjoyed and i hope to see you soon take care bye